Antarctica. The story of Antarctica is the story of secrecy enshrouded in government non-disclosure and cover-up. Yet scientists from primarily the United States, Russia, United Kingdom and France, each largely working separately for decades, have guardedly unveiled layers of truth in small bits and pieces that reveal a mysterious, darkly hidden past. In fact, up to 30 countries operate research stations on the continent. Despite the Antarctic Treaty signed by a dozen original nations in December 1959, promoting cooperation for shared scientific research that prohibits a military presence other than for adjunctive scientific purposes, more than a half dozen countries squabble over territorial claims. But regardless of the geopolitical situations of today in Antarctica, most people do not know the history of Antarctica, or better yet, the hidden history of Antarctica, which dates back to the end of World War II. After the war, the Allies signed several treaties. Many would say the Allies knew the true history of Antarctica and kept it hidden to this day, only to remain within their secret societies and fraternities. Which, of course, leads many to conspiracy theories. But what is a known fact, but with little information that can be proven, in the late 1930 AES, the German High Command sent their army on various expeditions all over the world to search for ancient technology and hidden knowledge on the history of our planet. It's now come to light that the German government during World War II was rooted in the occult. Their High Command was obsessed with finding or proving Arianism. Arianism is an ideology of racial supremacy which views the supposed Aryan race as a distinct and superior racial group which is entitled to rule the rest of humanity. In their search for Aryan supremacy, they discovered something else. They were completely wrong. What they found led them to continued expeditions to Antarctica. That led them to discover something that would change the history and course of humanity. But before we can continue down the rabbit hole of the mysteries of Antarctica, we have to first explore the mysteries of the German government before and during World War II. The German government was rooted in the occult. To their symbols they placed everywhere in their facilities, to construction of weapons development and space rocketry, to their controversial anti-gravity technologies development. Many German high command were involved in many secret societies such as the Thule Society and the Vril Society. Within these societies they practiced occult rituals and believed in ancient occult sciences. One of these famous practitioners is a young psychic woman named Maria Orsic. Maria Orsic was involved in an all-female secret society which very little is known of today. While engaging in psychic rituals, it is said she channeled scientific instructions on how to construct anti-gravity travel technology. Many would say her information is very similar to mainstream Serbian-American scientist and engineer Nikola Tesla, who created free energy zero-point electricity. Some say he also supposedly channeled his information psychically from unknown sources. But back to Maria Orsic and her all-female secret society, they did not want their information falling into the hands of any government. They knew it would be misused and weaponized for the government's selfish interests, which unfortunately happened. Maria Orsic and her information was leaked and discovered by the secret societies that controlled the German high command. The Germans immediately went to work, creating many early versions of anti-gravity flying craft. The anti-gravity technology can also be used to manipulate time which means they could use these vehicles to travel much quicker and farther than any vehicle on Earth. They kept this information and experiments away from the eyes of their citizens, creating what is known today as the Deep State, a second government within the German government. What the German government did before and during World War II was to construct various laboratories and facilities, in secret, with secret funding, away from the eyes of their citizens and, most importantly, their enemies and other governments. Inside these secret research facilities, they practiced controversial hidden physics and sciences that only today's scientists are discovering are possible. They developed various anti-gravity craft, rockets and weapons. One famous weapon that was developed but also shrouded in secrecy was the D.A. Glocker. The D.A. Glocker was one of many failed time-traveling projects attempted by the German scientists in underground labs in Europe and eventually Antarctica. Some researchers suspect in the final days of the war 
The D-Glocker was supposedly activated and sent several soldiers forward in time with their fates unknown. With all these hidden sciences and experiments done by German physicists, it became clear their government was losing the war, but they did not want their secret advanced technology to go to waste or to even be used against their enemies. So the German deep state, still under the command of various aspects of the German military, decided to wage a secret war against the Allies and allowed the German government to lose the war. They took their secret technology, weapons, military and scientists, and settled at sites they previously conducted expeditions. Their chosen land was Antarctica. But the question still remains. Why or how did the remaining German government, with this technology, escape to Antarctica? How were they able to bring all of their equipment, personnel and technology, and possibly build a secret base in such extreme climate? There are rumours that the German deep state during and even before World War II were secretly led by extraterrestrial and or extra-dimensional beings who secretly assisted the Germans in constructing their time travel and anti-gravity technology. But this will be explored later. After World War II, rumours of a secret German base called New Swabia, or New Schwabenland, or Base 211, surfaced to the American government. In 1947, President Truman then recruited Admiral Richard E. Byrd, who was a decorated United States Navy officer, Medal of Honor recipient, explorer and pioneer and American aviation, to conduct a military expedition into the Antarctic South Pole for any evidence of a German base and, if possible, to destroy it. This expedition was known to the public as Operation High Jump. Operation High Jump, also known as the United States Navy Antarctic Development Program, or Task Force 68, was a United States Navy operation to establish an Antarctic research facility. Led by the Naval High Command, Rear Admiral Richard Byrd, and Rear Admiral Ethan Eric Larson, and under the control of President Harry S. Truman, were the only ones who knew what this mission's real objectives were. The operation began on August 1946 and concluded February 1947. It included 4,700 men, 70 naval ships, and 33 aircraft. They managed to successfully build out a military base as they toured the South Pole every morning, in their hunt for any signs of German naval airships, navy vessels, bases, or any signs of any military activity from any government. Months went by and nothing was discovered. Admiral Byrd and his men were beginning to believe the Antarctic was safe of any secret German base or any activity of anything nefarious. They were beginning to believe it was somewhat silly to believe the Germans after World War II had the power to secretly move their operations to such a cold, harsh climate if they moved anywhere at all. But they continued with their mission exploring the Antarctic's cold, icy lands and mountains. Looking at how large Antarctic is, as big as a continent, they imagined, maybe thousands of years ago, it might have once been a beautiful, rich nation, filled with forest and greenery and beautiful beaches, but is now an iceberg of nothingness. Months went by, and the great admiral and his men were on the cusp of beginning to pack their equipment dismantle their base of operation, and head back to the U.S. with no evidence of any military activity. One cold early morning in early 1947, as airships were exploring unexplored lands to the far south of their base, they saw it, what they were looking for the entire time, a circular disc craft just floating in the air. Then they saw another, and another, and another. As a moor showed up, they immediately radioed Admiral Byrd, screaming on the other end, Admiral, we got contact, we got contact. Great large ships all over the sky, we need backup, we need backup. Then the radio went silent. Admiral Byrd immediately rounded up his men and took the entire fleet to the radio's contact location. He rounded up all his men, Navy ships and aircraft to see what was really going on. He tried to make contact with his men over the radio with no response. Upon arrival, they saw nothing. Then they heard an explosion, circular disc craft shooting down one of the large Navy vessels. Then, more circular disc arrived and immediately started firing on their aircrafts. There was no evidence they could find where these ships came from. One of his men said, Admiral, there is no point of entry location. They are coming out of nowhere. Admiral Byrd and his men immediately changed their tactics to offensive engagement and immediately started firing back 
targeting and even hitting some of these mysterious craft, falling to the sea like their airships. They ended up striking some of these ships and it became a heavy battle with casualties on both sides. But it was obvious they were losing. These circular discs had superior laser-like weapons and explosives. They could travel at max speeds unheard of according to modern day physics. Their shields and defense systems were far superior than the Admiral and his fleet. As the battle waged on, it took a dark turn. As the Admiral was ready for retreat, one of his men yelled and pointed up. All of a sudden, several more circular craft appeared out of thin air. They immediately started firing, hitting every ship and navy boat and destroying it with one shot. The Great Admiral screamed, pull out, pull out, retreating his small remaining forces immediately as they were outnumbered and outgunned. The large remaining circular craft stopped firing, but stood there still in one place, not moving in the sky, watching them retreat. With the feeling of arrogance that this was their land, their territory. One of Admiral Byrd's men asked him while dazed and confused, what the hell was that? The Admiral took his binoculars to take one last close-up look at these ships and saw something that changed his life. He wasn't sure what he saw exactly, but it appeared to be the most hideous-looking creature he saw inside the ship he had ever seen. It was clear that whatever these things were, were not of this world. And it became clear to Admiral Byrd, although it only became clear after the battle, that the Germans and whoever, or whatever their alien benefactors are, were watching them, his Navy fleet and their base, the entire time they set foot in Antarctica. When Admiral Byrd returned to the US and met with President Truman and Naval Intelligence, he told them his story with great detail about how a mysterious fleet of advanced aircraft in Antarctica South Pole, so advanced they can fly within seconds from pole to pole, almost destroyed his entire fleet. But he never got a direct location on their headquarters or base of operation. Their whereabouts remain unknown. President Truman and the other naval officers said we have to classify this information as disclosed. Top secret. Only certain eyes will be allowed access to this information and the public is to never find out. They told him this information is to never leave this facility, that there is an advanced military fleet that is this powerful operating on our planet. After the meeting, it became clear to Truman and the Naval High Command that they had to take this war to the shadows. They did not want the public to know, for it could cause chaos and distrust in their government. Truman then formed a secret intelligence unit to gather any information they could find on UFOs or unidentified flying objects. This unit would be called MJ-12, and it would unfortunately become the creation of what we know today as the shadow government. In our next video, we will be discussing how exactly the Germans after World War II and their mysterious alien benefactors managed to successfully build out a military base in Antarctica and the even more mysterious creatures and ancient technology they discovered. Until then.